we will look at three ways to represent objects. First, implicit representation. Second, parametric. And third will be a planar approximation in the form of a geometric mesh. The implicit representation defines an object using an equation which takes the form of f of x equals zero, where in this case x is a 3D point. For example, a sphere can be defined as x squared plus y squared plus z squared minus r squared equals zero. One problem with implicit representation is that it is difficult to go from arbitrary objects to equations. If we look at the objects in the background, it would be difficult to arrive at the equation of their implicit representation. Also, for example, the equation here is a cartoid. The benefit of this approach is that objects can be stored with few parameters, and we can infinitely zoom into the object without seeing a planar approximation, such as the triangular mesh that we will describe later on. The second approach is parametric. The equation takes the form of f of uv, where u and v are the parameters of the surface. x in bold is the 3D surface point. For example, a sphere can be defined using spherical coordinates by longitude and latitude. Also depicted here are Bezier patches, which are defined using a set of control points parameterized by u and v. Bezier patches are good for smooth objects, such as cars or aircraft wings, with smooth joins possible across the edges of the patches. We will focus on polygon meshes, for example a triangular mesh. The object is made up of lots of triangles representing the surface. In this example, the object was scanned from Michelangelo's David in Florence in 2000. It has 2 billion polygons and takes 32 gigabytes of storage. Even now, it is difficult to fit the full model into memory for rendering, and graphic cards still do not have enough memory for this whole mesh. The advantages for triangular meshes are that we can use the ray triangle intersection tests for rendering the mesh using ray tracing to generate high quality images. We can rasterize triangles using GPU hardware at a very high rate of millions per second, which is useful for computer games amongst other applications. We can also employ texture mapping onto the planar triangles to give the meshes the appearance of more detail than they actually have, which is another trick used on computer games to make realistic scenes. We can also easily manipulate the mesh. For example, we could simplify the meshes so that when the object is distant, the reduced mesh is rendered to save time, but without having much visual impact. But then as the object becomes closer to the viewer, we use the higher detailed original meshes where the detail is noticeable. The graphics processing unit is a simplified processor which has all the relevant mathematical operations, plus the capability to handle vectors, matrices, and operations thereon. These units are much simpler than more complex CPUs, and so many can be placed onto a chip. The latest graphics cards will have thousands of these processing units with the capability to process millions of points and triangles per second with a large degree of parallelism. This makes the cards also suitable for scientific use such as numerical simulations. This is known as general purpose GPUs. OpenGL and DirectX are APIs for accessing the underlying graphics hardware. OpenGL is easy to learn and cross-platform. It takes around 10 lines of code to open a window and render an object. DirectX 12 is Microsoft operating system dependent and difficult to learn with around 200 plus lines of code to achieve the same. But DirectX 12 allows much better access to the latest features on GPUs or even leads GPU development, whereas features tend to have a slower migration into OpenGL. For students starting out, OpenGL and Qt is probably a good direction. We will now look at some basic classes in C++ to facilitate object storage. The fundamental primitive is a 3D point. We can use three floats to represent a point within a class. We can also declare a vector class. A vector has direction but no location. The direction can be stored as three floats. An example member could be the function that returns the magnitude of the vector. Building on the point class, we can create a triangle class. Each triangle is made up of three points. OpenGL allows the rendering of quadrilaterals, which we could store using four points. 
Quads are problematical for rendering algorithms because it's possible to have a non-planar object. In other words, the three points on a quad can be in one plane and the fourth point can be elevated above that plane which results in a crease in the quad. This will make the object non-planar. All points of a triangle are within a plane which simplifies the rendering algorithm. We will now look at three alternatives for storing objects that are made up from lots of planar faces. First, we could use the explicit representation where each face is listed and for each face, the points that make up that face are listed in order. In this unit cube at the origin, there are eight vertices and six faces. The explicit representation requires four vertices per face, which is 24 vertices overall. If we look at the left hand side, the top row there indicates the bottom face of the cube. The drawback of this representation is that it requires transformations to be computed on 24 vertices rather than just the 8. If we draw the object, we end up drawing 24 edges. There are 4 edges per quad, even though there are just 12 edges in the object. Also, there could be issues in modeling software. So if, for example, the user selects the bottom right hand corner, um, are they selecting all three points or just one point of one face? Also, if there are any precision rounding errors, then would all of those three points be detected as one point or would they be regarded as three separate points? The next method is probably the most common. In this case, all points are stored uniquely in an array. In this case, the eight vertices are stored in the array as on the left. Then each face is made up of indexes into the array in order to describe which points make up that face. In this case, any 3D transformation can operate on just the eight points. Also, if the user picks the bottom right hand vertex, then it is unambiguous as to which point they have selected. There is still the drawback that we are drawing more edges than we need to, but mostly we are interested in rendering solid models rather than wireframe models. Also, it is possible that this requires more memory due to the storage of both vertices and pointers to the vertices, but this depends on how much memory is required to store the points versus the memory pointers. For example, are we using 32-bit floats or 64-bit doubles? And are the indexes 32-bit or 64-bit memory pointers or an integer lookup? This makes the storage question much more cloudy than a simple answer, but it is the case that more processing is required to keep track of the two lists. Here is a triangle class. The star operator indicates that these are now pointers to points rather than the points themselves. A pointer in 32-bit memory will be 4 bytes. Therefore, the pointer to vertex memory version of a triangle at 12 bytes will take less space in comparison to a triangle with the three points themselves in the class, which was 36 bytes. But we must bear in mind the cost of storing the vertices elsewhere. This is an example of storage size. The sphere on the previous slide has 760 triangles and 382 vertices. Each vertex will be stored as three floats, which is 12 bytes. For the explicit representation, each triangle is 36 bytes for the three points. And for 760 triangles, this will equate to 27,360 bytes. For the pointers to a vertex list, the vertex list will occupy 382 times 12 bytes and the triangles will occupy 760 times the 12 bytes that are used for the pointers. In total, this is 13,704 bytes. There is a more space efficient triangular strip model, which in this case takes 9,144 bytes. The triangle strip model assumes that any three consecutive points in the list make up a triangle. Triangle 1 uses points 0, 1 and 2. Triangle 2 uses points 1, 2 and 3 and so on through the list. Therefore, n triangles can be stored using n plus 2 vertices. The space seems to be the lowest, which helps with transmission time of the mesh to the GPU. It is also efficient to render these in hardware as some of the edge calculations can be reused but it is difficult to create triangle strips from arbitrary geometry. For both OpenGL and DirectX, you pass an array of vertices to the graphics card, along with an instruction on how the vertices should be treated for rendering. 
If point list, then n vertices will be rendered for the n vertices passed in. For line list, each pair of points is regarded to be a start and end point of a line. So for two n vertices, n lines will be drawn. For line strip, each two consecutive points will create a line and we move one vertex at a time through the array. This means we need n plus one vertices for n lines. Triangle list is the explicit representation where three n vertices are required for n triangles. Triangle strip is on the previous slide. Both APIs allow vertex buffers where you pass the vertices and also the pointers to the vertices. Here I shall discuss which of the previous representations would be appropriate for each of the visualizations on this slide. Top left, we have three graphs representing accelerometry data taken from a bird. The time series graph consists of a set of connected lines. In this case, it would be most appropriate to use three line strips. This would offer the most compact storage. At the top right, we have a set of photons from a light simulation on light reflected from the inner face of a ring. In this case, point list would be the most appropriate. The bottom left is the sphere that we have already discussed. Triangle strip would be the most compact. Another answer that would also be correct would be to say that in general, vertex buffers, which are pointers to a vertex list, would also be appropriate because sometimes triangle strips are difficult to create for arbitrary objects. On the bottom right, we have a vector field of flow through a constriction. Each arrow represents the direction and speed of the flow. Each arrow is made up of a line segment for the main body and two lines for the head. It is not possible to render a single arrow using consecutive points. Also, because there are many arrows, it only makes sense to use the line list in this case. 